Struvoli is one of those recipes I've been dying to make, but I've never had the chance to, until now, of course. It's a classic Italian treat, and it's commonly served around Christmas, and they consist of little fried dough balls tossed in a super delicious honey sugar syrup. I have a feeling these are going to be very, very good. But first, let's knock out a little bit of prep by making that dough. Sound good? Let's cook. After doing quite a bit of research for this recipe, it seems like the main dough is just a sweetened pasta dough. And I'm not at all surprised by this. If you know anything about Italian cuisine, they are brilliant at cross-utilizing every single ingredient. A little leftover pizza sauce, why not a steak pizzaiola? A little bit of leftover bread, why not a beautiful panzanella salad? And the same applies for this pasta dough. A little bit of sugar, a few other ingredients, and you've got dessert. All right, I'm gonna move over to the butcher block. I have three and a half cups of Italian zero zero flour. I think you could use bread flour, should be fine. Next, I'm gonna finely grate in one orange. I always like to give it a few knocks, seems to get stuck up underneath there. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with one lemon. Add a few knocks there, get all that goodness out. Then I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of sugar. I think this should be plenty of sweetness. Next, two teaspoons of baking powder to make sure these are nice and light and fluffy, and then a half teaspoon of sea salt. I wanna make sure my dough is really seasoned up. Then at this point, I'm gonna use my hands and I'm just gonna mix everything together. I mean, you could use a whisk or a fork, whatever. And then at this point, I'm gonna add in six tablespoons of pork lard. And Comey's, if you don't have lard, you can absolutely substitute in some softened unsalted butter. But if you do wanna learn how to make lard, I've got a great recipe on my website. All right, let's mix in. I'm gonna go ahead and take the liberty to use the exact same technique I did in my S cookies. This is what my grandma did. She pinched the fat into the flour to make sure it was really incorporated and blended through. And once it's about the size of couscous, which this is, I'm gonna go ahead and call it done. Now, I I'm really gonna treat this like pasta. So I'm going to make a well right in the center. I've got four large eggs. I don't think it matters if they're at room temperature or cold. And then I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of Sambuca. If you can get any sort of anise liqueur, should be totally fine here. Now I'm gonna use a fork. I'm gonna break up the yolks. It's just kind of what I do. And I'm gonna whisk it, almost like I'm making scrambled eggs. And just like pasta, once it is whisked, I'm gonna start bringing in the dry ingredients that are right around the eggs and Sambuca and start working everything together. But just like with pasta, it gets a little bit tough to do that. So at this point, I'm gonna switch over to a bench knife and then I'm gonna bring in all the ingredients to the center, just like this. All right, now switching over to my hands. It's time to get messy. Let's see if I still got it in me. It's been a minute since I've made pasta. I'm gonna start bringing in the wet and dry ingredients together, squeezing and pushing and pulling everything to make sure all the wet ingredients are completely mixed with the dry. Now I'm pretty positive that this is just like pasta dough. If it's a little bit wet, I'm sure you can add more flour. For me, it seems a tad dry. So I'm gonna start off by adding a tablespoon or two of water and then just gonna work it in. And taking everything I know about pasta dough, I add a little bit, work it in, see if it needs any more. That little extra tablespoon seems perfect here. I'm going to knead the dough for in between five and seven minutes, just like I would be doing pasta. Oh man, if there's one thing I know about kneading pasta dough, after five or seven minutes or so, you should always do another five minutes just to make sure, and that's what I'm going to do. So another five minutes is added in here. I just want to make sure. Sorry, can't help myself. I want this to be perfect. And just like when I make any dough, I like to fold it into a little ball. I'm going to give it a little push. Super soft. A lot of spring there. This is awesome. All right, I'm going to transfer it right over to a bowl. I've got a sheet of plastic wrap. I'm just going to put it over the top. And then at this point, I'm just gonna let it sit to the side and let the dough rest for a bit. All right, I believe we're on the right track. We've let this rest for 30 minutes. And whenever you work with any dough, this is just kind of common knowledge, you let it rest because you don't wanna overwork the gluten so that things rip or tear. So that's why we did that. We beat it up pretty good. So I think what we need to do now is we're gonna cut it up and then get it rolling out and then cut it again. So my guess is this is going to move really, really quick. Here we go. I'm heading over back to my butcher's block. I'm just gonna dust that surface with a little bit of flour. I just want to take all precautions necessary to make sure nothing is sticking. All right, ripping the plastic wrap off and putting the dough right on the center. And just to be safe again, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of flour on the top. I wanna cut this down. It's gonna be way too hard to roll this big old chunk of dough. So I think splitting it into fourths should be just fine. All right, I'm gonna set the other three to the side and I'm gonna start rolling out that first one, uh-oh, mayday. I don't think I should have put any flour down. I'm having a really hard time rolling it out. So when you do this, 
Don't put flour down. All right, I need a quick workaround. I'm just gonna put my fingers in a little bit of water, give them a quick rub down. And yeah, okay, that worked perfectly. Again, don't even put flour down. You don't even have to do this. I'm gonna take it to about a half inch in diameter, just like this. I'm gonna repeat the process with the other three chunks of dough as well. Then I'm gonna grab a bench knife. I think you could use a regular chef knife, that's all you have. And I'm gonna take little half inch to one inch cuts and make little sort of dough pieces. I mean, there's nothing else really to call it other than that. All right, this looks great. Now, I know I'm gonna need flour here. All right, so I'm gonna sprinkle on a tablespoon or two and mix all of this together. I just wanna make sure nothing is sticking together. I don't need a big chunk of pasta dough in my oil. All right, let's set this to the side, and I think this would be great timing to get some oil heated up. Use any neutral flavored oil, okay? Any oil that you love, that you feel is healthy outside of olive oil, Use it, use what you want here. I'm gonna crank the heat up to medium. I'm gonna take this to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a thermometer. If you don't, I always say just hit it with a little bit of flour. If it sizzles up and it doesn't turn brown real quick, you're good to go. All right, I'm gonna take a huge scoop of our little dough balls, add them in there. Yep, got burnt way too many at one time. All right, I should probably do this in smaller batches and I'm gonna to need to do it in batches anyways because I didn't get all of it in there on the first try. So. I think one to two minutes is all I'm going to need. I'm going to treat this a little bit like a donut, which do not take long to fry at all. Once they get to this nice golden brown, honestly, I think they're good to go. So using a slotted spoon, I'm going to place them to the side and drain them on paper towels. And I'm just interested to see what it looks like in the inside. So I'm going to crack it open. And it's honestly, it's it's kind of like bread a little bit, but the outside is a little crunchy and hard, but really good. All right, while the struffoli are draining off, this is perfect timing to get started on our honey sugar glaze that we're gonna coat it with in the end. So all the research I put in for this glaze, everything was so different. So here's the one that I'm gonna go with. I have a cup of honey that I'm gonna add in there. I'm gonna do it in a large pot because I'm gonna add the struffoli to it at the end and I want something big enough. Next, I'm gonna add in a third cup of sugar. Now I have one fresh vanilla bean and a good conversion is one vanilla bean would be about one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Okay, if you never worked with a vanilla bean, you slice it in half long ways, and then you scrape out all the goodness. This is actually called a pod. The insides are called beans. I don't know why everyone calls them vanilla beans. They're actually just pods. All right, scrape it and forgot some, and gosh, forgot another piece, and still forgot some. I'll come back and get it later. Okay, I'm gonna add all this to the pot, Next, I'm going over to the burner, but first, a really cool trick I learned a long time ago. Remember those hollowed out vanilla bean pods? Yeah, I'm gonna add those to a container and cover them in sugar. In about a week or so, you are gonna have vanilla flavored sugar. You are welcome. So delicious. This will last about two months in your cupboard. Just put it in a cool, dark place. All right, putting that glaze back over on the cooktop, turning the heat to low. I'm not looking to boil anything. I just want the sugar to dissolve into the honey along with the vanilla beans. All right, this is looking really good. And it also thins out a little bit, which makes it easier to move. I'm gonna start taking a handfuls of the struffoli and adding it right to that pot. Again, just keeping it over low heat. This will also reheat everything as well and keep it nice and warm, which is awesome. All right, I've got a rubber spatula. I'm mixing everything together to make sure each of these are completely coated in that syrup. We're just gonna let this sit for like two to three minutes, let that honey cool down a little bit so that it's easier to mold. I'm telling you, it will always go back to these fundamental cooking and baking techniques. When you put these into practice over and over again, you can absolutely make anything. Your culinary intuition will be through the roof because you have these skills and it will always elevate your everyday cooking. All right, I've seen a few different ways to plate these up, but here is what I'm gonna do. You can make a big mound out of this struffoli in the center, but other recipes I saw, especially around the Christmas holiday, is they form them into a wreath or a ring, just like this. So I'm gonna do that route. Next, very classic, I'm gonna sprinkle on some sprinkles. You can get fancy with all those different colored gold, silver, whatever you wanna do. Also, it is very traditional to serve this up with some candied fruit, like cherries or citron, even some lemon or orange peel, if you have that, you should definitely put that on there. I've seen it in every single recipe. Now, while this is a classic Italian holiday dessert, I'm telling you what, I think these would be really good in the morning time with coffee. They've got a biscotti-like flavor to them, except for they're a little more tender and a little sweeter. 
I've never done these before, but oh my gosh, so glad I did. Now, if you love these and love Italian cookies, then you have to check out my S Cookies recipe. They are amazing. I've got a great recipe video. I'll see you on there.